I hired 100 child predators to work for my company. With the challenge being, the last one to say something or do something inappropriate with a minor is gonna win one million dollars. The other 99 contestants will take a seat with Chris Anson. And we hired these people without doing any background checks on their criminal history. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. 2024 has been an insane year for YouTuber exposés. It's like new accusations are dropping every few days like major orders in Helldivers 2. However, among all these allegations, none are more impactful than those against Mr. Beast and his crew and the Mr. Beast Empire. You know, back in my day, the most subscribed YouTube channel would get in trouble for saying some bad words on a bridge. What a fucking nick. Now, being the most subscribed YouTuber means all eyes are on you. If you are not a pure soul who can ride the Nimbus, then chances are some of your past actions are gonna come up to haunt you. Right now, Mr. Beast is facing some very serious accusations ranging from using fake illegal lotteries, exploiting children, mistreatment of employees, employing a person whom Chris Hansen would like to take a seat. What are you doing? Making a mistake. Making a mistake and also a broader conspiracy to cover up any misconduct perpetuated by Mr. Beast Enterprises. Well, over the years, people have speculated that Mr. Beast has had ulterior motives for helping people. None have really made a compelling argument or case for him exploiting people maliciously for personal gain. Until now. Mr. Beast has been able to avoid major damage to his public image and brand because of his generosity and positive impact he's had on the world. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? And I think we'd all love to believe wholeheartedly the image Mr. Beast has for himself. And same with YouTube. What an amazing look it is for YouTube when the most popular guy is doing it all through charity, through being a genuinely good guy. But what's harder to accept is that maybe by watching and supporting Mr. Beast, we inadvertently help to build a media empire that is based on exploitation with charity as the cover story, allegedly. And again, I think it's important for me to share this kind of stuff with my audience, especially when it concerns the top creator on the platform, somebody who I personally used to look up to. The allegations against Mr. Beast and some of his crew are truly damning. And today we're going to dive into all of it. So why don't you have a seat? Why don't you have a seat there and uh, get comfortable from that? Starting from the beginning of when this all first blew up, we actually have to go back two months because the story around Ava Chris Tyson started to hit mainstream in July but back on June 13th, two smaller channels each uploaded a video about Ava Chris Tyson. Ava Chris Tyson, of course, is one of the staples of the Mr. Beast crew. Prism42 posted a video titled, Chris Tyson talked inappropriately to a 13 year old. And in it, Prism prints out the logs and goes over the receipts like fucking Chris Hansen. You know, I have the transcript. These chat logs involve Tyson and Lava GS, someone who was 13, 14 at the time of many of these messages. So yeah, let's roll some clips. He's asking you, Chris, does she know about your hentai addiction? What? Lava says, I'm your first Patreon big boy. Posted some fire nudes for you. Please no share. And this is someone that you're talking to that is 14 years old, that you know is 14. What was your plan here with this 14 year old boy? I mean, we talked about sex and stuff like that. And then sure did. So there's a lot of examples of Tyson sending winky faces, kissy faces, calling this 14 year old daddy. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing? Let's call this what it is. This is just flirting with a minor, okay? And look, Tyson might try and hide behind the, these were just edgy jokes shield. That has rightfully protected people in the past, but that shield can't block this. If you're calling your homies, daddy, you know, dicks out for the homies kind of vibe, that's fine if they're adults. It's not funny and it's not a joke when you're doing this to a minor because it's the exact same behavior that groomers do. Posted some fire nudes for you, please no share. That is, you can't do that. And then to maintain a relationship until he turns 16. You tell me that's not grooming? That's grooming. Me grooming children? That's just, just joking. <laughs> I was only pretending to groom kids. You're not a real predator. No, sir. Just a pretend predator. And while the logs I've seen aren't as explicit mm. as some of the stuff you see on To Catch a Predator, at best, we can say Ava Chris Tyson 
was flirting with the minor. They also met up in person. I think every 20 year old knows it's not okay to talk to 14 year olds like this, right? Remember when you went to a high school party and if there were ever dudes in college there, you knew those guys were losers because it's like, why are they hanging out with us? It's not weird to have young fans that you interact with and respond to like fan mail. What is weird is having such a close flirtatious friendship with a 14 year old when you're 20 and you're also sharing hentai and other prawn in a private discord server a server which had several members that were minors and those minors were mods mods who would have to check the nsfw channel Ooh, yeah sharing prawn with minors is illegal <laughs> Now, the person who was allegedly groomed, Lava GS, has publicly stated that everything reported in said video is a lie and it was all edgy humor. He was never groomed and doesn't consider himself a victim. But after a few days, Lava GS would post again that the conversations he had with Chris never should have happened and it was wrong. So quick shout out to Prism42. If you want to watch this video and any other videos I mentioned in this one, links will be down in the description. However, that wasn't the end. Another user, Verdius, posted this video on June 13th, The Degenerate History of Ava Chris Tyson. This video goes in depth on a very hard hitting point. Tyson's friendship with an artist known as Shadman. I had never heard of Shadman prior to this news, and I wish I never had. I'll spare you some of the more disturbing, grotesque details, but you see, Shadman spent a good chunk of his time creating inappropriate art of children. What? Sometimes they were fictional children, which is bad enough, but on more than one occasion, he made art of other content creators who were minors. And very disturbing art portraying YouTubers children. These illustrations go all the way back to 2016. So Tyson being a fan of Shadman, he clearly knew the type of art Shadman made. At one point, Shadman literally posted a video on his YouTube channel titled, I like to draw. <laughs> now for most people, you're probably hearing some blaring sirens right now because I can't put enough red flags on screen to illustrate <laughs> how disgusting this person is. I think we all understand that edgy jokes and humor was more prevalent back in the mid to late 2010s, but this does not fall under that category. You were commissioning art from somebody who draws, well, you know. So essentially we have repeated behavior through Discord logs, archive tweets, Reddit comments, Snapchats, and deleted video clips that all show a clear pattern of behavior for Ava Chris Tyson. I think uh, the nicest way to describe it is an unhealthy interest in the appearance of children. Say that again. So shout out to Verdius. He did a great job covering this stuff. And that's saying something given how disgusting the material he had to look through was. But it wasn't until a month later that this story really started to pick up steam. When Aadrox uploaded his video, this will make you hate Chris Tyson. But the degeneracy doesn't stop there. As people started looking into this, one user, Z Dragon posted even more evidence against Tyson, including a clip from one of his old YouTube videos where he links revenge prawn in the description of the video. Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? But um, the link's in the description if you want to see him. I mean, I'm not endorsing people to go look at somebody else's private business, but I know that people might want to see him, so there, it's there if you want it. What? I'm not endorsing you look at this stuff, but I am drawing your attention to it and making it readily available to you. Guys, Revenge Prawn, link's in the description right down there. Put a whole bunch of, like, go down to the description. I'm not endorsing it. But if you go down to the description, so like, how did you get away with this? That's what I'm very curious about. With more attention being brought to the story, more people started uploading screenshots and videos of Chris Snapchatting minors in a way that, uh, you know, inappropriate. Naughty, naughty. On July 23rd, Ava Chris Tyson responded to the accusations in a series of tweets. I'm also blocked by this person and I have no idea why. <laughs> I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior. If it hurt or offended anyone, it was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. Yes, you have been neglecting your mental health for a very, very long time. I want to add I never groomed anyone. Are you sure about that? To lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond Bad edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. In past years, I have learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can continue to work on myself. Now, it might have been easier to believe these were just bad edgy jokes if you didn't also support an artist at the time who made lolly 
Mr. Beast responded by saying, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I've been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. At the time of recording, this is Mr. Beast's only response to all of the allegations. Now, what's even crazier is that this image that was labeled by Shadman as a uh -huh. illustration can be seen in a Mr. Beast video where Mr. Beast actually looks at it. Yeah, this Shadman art, it definitely stands out for the wrong reasons. Like if I saw this poster at my friend's house, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck is that? Like, why do you have that on your wall? The bottom line is that Tyson is a fucking freak whose behavior stretched out for a pretty long period of time. And he found a passion in grooming minors. And we're not just talking about giving them haircuts. <laughs> Get it, groom? <laughs> hey, that really sucked. Mr. Beast was also present in the Discord server leaks, which again had Tyson and others talking in the same server where Hentai and Pran were allegedly shared with minors. Now, it's very important to say that I have not seen any evidence of Mr. Beast engaging in the same type of degenerate behavior. However, all this information was out there. It's hard to believe Jimmy would be completely ignorant on all of this stuff in regards to one of his closest friends, which makes his response seem like Tyson was only booted from the company now because this has become a massive scandal. In other words, it's more likely, in my opinion, Jimmy knew to a certain extent the interests of Tyson and did nothing about it. I suppose one could argue Jimmy was just trying to be a good friend, but some friends are worth sticking up for and others aren't now having one of your closest friends being outed as a degenerate with vast amounts of irrefutable evidence is pretty hard hitting given how tyson was involved in mr beast's videos it also retroactively ruins a lot of his content for me to re-watch some of these old videos and know that one of the people in them is just attracted to minors and talking to them inappropriately you know it, it's very alarming stuff for the biggest channel to have someone so close to the top who could be in a position where they could do some pretty reprehensible things. But the Jenga tower doesn't collapse after you remove just one piece. Ava Chris Tyson's controversy put Mr. Beast's image and brand in a weakened state that softened him up for another bombshell and a second plane to hit the tower. Enter Dogpack404, who posted the expose video, I worked for Mr. Beast, he's a fraud. Right now sitting at 12 and a half million views in just a couple weeks. Now that's a pretty bold title, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Prior to watching, you might assume this is some young kid chasing clout trying to expose the biggest YouTuber with accusations that really don't hold up, except the claims made are substantiated. Also important to note that Dogpack says his videos are not monetized, which makes them them and his claims appear much more in good faith. He's not profiting off of this content. This is for educational purposes, as he says. Dogpack, having worked for Mr. Beast, has many internal connections with other people who have worked there, and anonymously, other employees have corroborated the things Dogpack says. Bro, I worked there for not even five days, and Chris was talking about his love for Lolly Prawn and talking about his Discord where they shared it. Okay, not to go back to this, but like, here's the million dollar question. If you're into that stuff, why would you tell people? <laughs> If it's an open secret this obvious in the company, then it's very hard for me to believe that Jimmy would not know anything about it. But the major points of Dogpack's video reveal some pretty damning evidence about Mr. Beast's content and the questionable ethics behind it. He points out how Mr. Beast's content is aimed at earning the trust of children as a means to exploit that for views, subscribers, comments, and to sell merch and candy. Trust Mr. Beast and you could win it big. Now, one of the things I really liked about Mr. Beast's content is that his videos felt real. When Jimmy would post a video like counting to 100,000, he would actually do that shit. Surviving underwater for 48 hours or whatever it was. You know, he established himself as somebody who did what the title of each video said. And this has been a cornerstone of his brand and popularity. Because when you're telling people you're giving away all this money, prizes, cars, islands, yachts, etc. If it ever came out that you lied about that shit or deceived people in some way, that would look really bad. 
The most damning part of this section of Dog Pack's video is about Mac, a contestant who's appeared in several Mr. Beast videos over the last year. And the first three he was in, he failed to win any of them. So Mac was a recurring character that people loved and they hated watching him fail. That is until a month ago, Mr. Beast uploaded World's Deadliest Obstacle Course in which Mac had one last chance. He was the sole contestant in a challenge to win $800,000. This video and the story behind it is fantastically edited. It's emotional. It's like a real redemption, feel good type story. You've lost so many times. Are you gonna win this time? What are you gonna do with the money? Near the end of this video, there's a montage of his previous failures juxtaposed with his imminent victory. And it was like movie magic, except it was fake. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him die through this fake door twice. This line is scripted, this action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. Which pretty much ruins every video Mac is in and the story that they tried to tell in these videos. He wasn't just some random guy who became friends with Mr. Beast. He was chosen specifically. He used to work on another channel that was pretty big and had been working for Mr. Beast prior to appearing on videos. And it's like, you expect stuff in Mr. Beast videos to be over dramatized, but the broad strokes, the overall story you're trying to tell me, I expect that to be true, not scripted. Because if it was, if this is just your friend and you're scripting his failures and his success, I wouldn't watch the video. And if these videos are fake and scripted, that begs the question, how many others are? That was the problem with like prank channels back in the day. If they faked one video, how many others did they fake? This calls Jimmy's persona and content into serious question. Mac has been living in a 6,000 square foot multi-million dollar mansion. And when he wins this final challenge, you're meant to think, wow, what a stand up guy. He deserved that. He's going to spend the money on his friends and family. I feel good. And I hate feeling good based on a lie. You see, Mr. Beast promotes the idea that he casts random contestants in his videos. And there's nothing wrong with having your friends in a challenge where they can win money. But what is wrong is not disclosing that. Not telling people that Mac has worked at Mr. Beast before he comes on to do these challenges. Mac was also a big player on the Airac channel before he left that. And then a short time later, showed up on Mr. Beast's channel. So learning that he was basically an industry plant by Mr. Beast is pretty devastating to Mac's story as it was presented in Mr. Beast's videos. Dogpack points out other examples of videos being faked, like the seven days stranded at sea. You can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. He points out multiple examples of friends, family members, and staff of Mr. Beast being picked as contestants for videos. Once again, shattering the illusion that these are just random subscribers and that you too, you could be in a Mr. Beast video as well by subscribing. Rigging game shows or scripting them doesn't just rob the content of its entertainment value. It's also illegal. Mr. Beast clearly has the means and methods to ensure his competitions are ethical, real, and fair. And I think ethical, real, and fair are much more interesting than fake, scripted, and rigged. The next section of Dog Pack's video covers Mr. Beast's history of illegal lotteries. Now, I thought it was a nice touch to have a clip of PewDiePie call out giveaways for subs. That was also very compelling to hear one most subscribed YouTuber indirectly condemning the behavior of another most subscribed YouTuber. So over the next seven days, I'm gonna be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to your channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. But Doug Pack's points on illegal lotteries are pretty much irrefutable. That's something Jimmy did and did fairly often. It's also incredibly deceptive and a scam if you're selling t-shirts under the premise that they're all gonna be signed by Mr. Beast when members of his crew are signing the shirts for him. Once again, a few bad apples ruins the bunch. If just a few of these signatures are faked, that makes all of the signed shirts much less valuable as the legitimacy of their signatures can't be verified. Again, we'd all like to believe Mr. Beast makes his money through charity to then reinvest in more charity. But the truth appears to be that part of the money he makes is essentially selling gambling to kids. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, 
Imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. Did I mention I love loot boxes? It's the same tactic. Buy a shirt and maybe you'll get a PS5 or something worth hundreds of dollars. Like, isn't this the same idea behind Counter-Strike crates? So it's pretty insane to me that there was never a huge story about these illegal lotteries, or maybe we just missed it all. It's not looking good for Mr. Beast. I'll tell you that much. I think it's safe to say that using illegal lotteries to promote and profit off of gambling directed at kids you know, it's, it's a little unethical. Uh, fundamentally, it's just a scummy and legally bad thing to do. You, it's why you're supposed to include the phrase, no purchase necessary. You know, the point of a lottery that you have to pay to get into is that the person running the lottery is supposed to make more money than whatever the worth of the prizes are. Mr. Beast is the one hosting the lottery, so he's the one who benefits the most from these. And again, yes, Mr. Beast has done plenty of great and charitable work, but if he's funding part of that charity with illegal lotteries, shouldn't we question that? Like, you could argue the ends justify the means, but I built a children's hospital with the millions of dollars I made selling heroin. Am I a good person? <laughs> Dogpack also calls out Feastables, Mr. Beast's candy company, and it's interesting to connect the dots. What I'm starting to notice the more I look at Mr. Beast and his tactics is that he seems far less genuine and much more strategic than I previously thought. What are two of the most profitable ways to make money off kids? Candy and gambling. Fuck yeah, combine the two. Now, Jimmy has promoted Feastables as a healthier alternative to Hershey's, and it turns out the candy has more calories and sugar than Hershey's, which could also be considered false advertising. I mean, we're, we're wading through sketchy swamp right now. Dogpack is essentially saying that Jimmy is using childhood obesity as a platform to advocate for kids to buy the good chocolate, his chocolate, the stuff that won't turn them into tubby lard butts. Also concerning is Beast Burger. So, you know, candy and fast food are the chosen avenues for products Mr. Beast wants to make. Also, he recently announced like a new toy brand, again with the chance of winning something cool. Wow, this is the rarest toy you can get. I feel like candy, fast food, gambling, you know, these are your chosen avenues for products Mr. Beast wants to make. There are serious questions about companies whose product is designed to be as addicting to consume as possible. Super size me anyone? When consuming more of that product is blatantly unhealthy. Also, Mr. Beast labels Feastables as the world's best chocolate bar. The best tasting chocolate ever made by mankind. And he constantly shits on Hershey's in his promotional material. This is my old Feastables chocolate bar. And as you know, it tastes better than a Hershey's bar. Doesn't everything taste better than Hershey's? Is anybody else surprised that Hershey's hasn't filed a lawsuit or anything? I mean, oops, I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. So Dogpack's 54 minute exposed video offers some pretty damning allegations that look extremely hard to refute. And they attack the brand and image many people, myself included, have come to believe and associate with Mr. Beast. I don't know if it's possible for me to look at him the same way I did before this video, unless he comes out with some even crazier evidence that he's done nothing wrong. I, I feel like scraps of all this information have been out there for some time, but when it's all packaged together in a single crisp, scrumptious video, it's way easier for the layman to digest. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the currency you pay with is attention. To sum it up, Dogpack was very thorough, careful, and methodical with what he said and showed. So with even more damning allegations reaching the mainstream, the viral effect was in full swing, and so was the cover-up. Here's Dogpack on Twitter posting a screenshot of one of two cease and desist orders he received. When you open a really, really big can of worms, you ain't getting all those worms back in there, partner. Not only are your statements about Mr. Beast and Jimmy Donaldson untrue, they also violate the clear, binding, enforceable terms of your confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement. Then prove it. You have all the footage, but instead of posting any, you've just been deleting more. Yeah. Why prove your innocence with your own receipts when you can threaten people with legal action and strong arm them into silence? Dogpack has also revealed that other Mr. Beast employees are telling him that Jimmy wants to hire private investigators to find anything they can to discredit Dogpack and attack his character. How are you supposed to address a controversy? Hey, yeah, we screwed up these things, we fucked up, but we've been doing X, Y, and Z to improve on this and we haven't done it for a while. That defense can only go so far as your actions show. If you kept on doing these illegal lotteries and fake game shows, even as recently as one month ago, then you haven't really changed your behavior. 
and an apology isn't really going to work. Dogpack has also been attacking Mr. Beast's philanthropy efforts for being more for aiding private interest and boosting Mr. Beast's image than actually doing anything good. If these allegations are also true, then it's even scummier for Jimmy to use other popular content creators to promote a charity that is more focused on the interests of the charity rather than the charitable act itself, rather than the good it's doing for the planet. But all that stuff is mostly just alleged for right now. So Mr. Beast's team is in full crisis mode, attempting to silence as many people as they can, mass deleting comments, utilizing two separate law firms to send out cease and desist orders as intimidation tactics. Uh, you know, things an obviously innocent company would do. I hired 100 lawyers to threaten my haters with lawsuits, and if they can beat me in a trial, I'll give them a Tesla. Now, a YouTuber upper echelon has posted two videos detailing the cover-up, and again, those will be linked in the description. But as they say, one lie begets another. In a company who's willing to engage in shady practices to make money, yeah, I can see how that same company would do shady things to cover up other shady things. In this video, Upper Echelon has revealed that thousands, tens of thousands of comments are being scrubbed from Mr. Beast's latest video, and he is editing other videos as well. Remember the tipping the pizza delivery guy video where the Chadman poster was seen? Yeah, that's been cut out of the video. This is not how you respond to your predatory media empire falling apart if it's not actually predatory. Now checking Mr. Beast's latest video, it's hard to tell what the like to dislike ratio actually is. The dislike extension is not always accurate. Uh, however, Keemstar posted what he said was the actual like dislike ratio from Mr. Beast's studio analytics. And I'm sorry, but I don't really trust it. This would mean that the current controversy is having literally zero impact on the amount of dislikes. This is just further proof that removing dislikes was and still is the worst decision ever made in the history of mankind. Hey, remember when Dr. Disrespect edited the word minor out of his tweet responding to the Twitch ban? Yeah, I get similar vibes when you're cutting the part of the video with the Shadman poster in it. Similar vibes. I'm not saying anything about Jimmy again. I'm just pointing out what's being edited and removed is pretty important. Upper Echelon said he worked with someone named Hoboon to scrape the comments from Mr. Beast's channel, and what he found is very interesting. He points out Mr. Beast's channels are using the auto mod feature to filter out and delete comments containing certain words like scripted, scam, or shadman. Now, obviously, since I don't run illegal lotteries on my channel, nor do I fake game shows, the words scripted and scam are filtered out of my channel. Like if you try to post a comment with the word scripted or scam, uh, it's not gonna show up. It's gonna be filtered out for no reason. <laughs> In a nutshell, Mr. Beast's channels are currently deleting and censoring tens of thousands of comments in an attempt to shield the young and impressionable audience from the possibility that they're watching something fake and predatory. This brings us to the last part of the story, as it is right now, Dogpack's second video. I worked for Mr. Beast, he's a sociopath. This covers a different angle, arguably a more sinister side of the Mr. Beast empire. Now, I also found it interesting that despite this video getting like 8 million views in two days, it has suspiciously remained off of the trending tab. I could see why YouTube would not want a huge exposed video on their top creator, their golden child, to be on the front page of trending. Dogpack makes some serious allegations about some of the employees at the Mr. Beast Empire regarding what's a good way to put this? It's raping time. Yeah, stuff like that. So I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Dogpack alleges that Jimmy was involved in covering up stuff like that, which has yet to be proven yet. So he interviews a guy named Jake Weddle, who worked for Mr. Beast and was also meant to be the sole contestant in a video that never got uploaded. As we saw with Mac and other people on Mr. Beast, being the sole contestant in a video on a Mr. Beast channel is huge. That's a massive opportunity. But the video was never uploaded because it turned out really bad. And Jake basically talks about his experience making this video, which was like spending 30 days in solitary confinement for $10,000 a day. Jimmy would come in every other day for like an hour. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Jimmy said, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? To pretend to make it genuine? I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. 
But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You're in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agree to it. I needed it, of course. And Jake basically is saying that Mr. Beast will hold his influence over his employees as a way to manipulate them into doing what he wants. It's not a casting couch necessarily, or maybe it is, but the idea feels similar. Make me happy and good things will come to you. Don't do what I say and you get nothing. Put yourself in this mentally draining situation so that I can make content about your suffering and how difficult this challenge is. Like I said, it's fine for Jimmy himself or his friends who agree to these types of challenges to do them because they know exactly what they're getting into. You know, when they go to a fucking island and stay there for a week, they've done research on the island. They've prepared supplies. But when you're bringing on people who don't know what to expect, who haven't planned, you can't really force them into situations like this. It's not ethical. It's also pretty goddamn alarming that there's actually an internal document which has a no doesn't mean no type of mission statement. No means please don't. What? Jake provides testimony on the working conditions at Mr. Beast Empire, the dog shit pay, firing people for stepping out of line, for questioning the status quo, highlighting how a culture of fear is used to get employees to do what they want. I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is laser focused on one goal, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? Yeah, this is exactly how I felt about Mr. Beast, right? Filming charitable acts isn't inherently a bad thing, and Jimmy always got the benefit of the doubt because his content seemed so altruistic. But when we see deceptive, scummy tactics used to market unhealthy things to kids, covering up serious allegations, it becomes harder and harder to believe that the philanthropy and charity Mr. Beast does has also remained unblemished. Like, yeah, this is the one aspect of his business not tainted by any shady tactics. The video Jake was meant to be in sounds pretty horrifying mentally, depriving him of sleep by not turning off the lights. I said, so can we like have like nighttime hours? And they said no, because it would fuck up the time lapse shots. The time lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Encouraging him to keep doing the challenge, even though he wants to get out by flashing money in his face. The whole don't take no for an answer kind of mentality is scary when it's a challenge like this where you're trapped in a room. And again, this is Jake's testimony, his version of the story, and we haven't seen the other version. But if he was told to run a marathon as part of the challenge, for somebody who doesn't already train for that, that sounds like torture, bro. I started track across country at the age of three, did my first race at that age, and I just wobbled across the track. So I've been running for a long time, and even I struggle with going out and running five miles at times. Running a marathon is just an insane thing to ask of somebody who hasn't trained for that sort of thing. So Jake went through this type of experience as he had a carrot on the stick at the end of the treadmill. You know, a jump start for his career. Suffer through this and you'll get big rewards. Seeing how much Mr. Beast's audience loves Mac, I think Jake probably would have got a similar reaction if the video had been posted. But there is proof out there. Perhaps somebody will leak the footage from this challenge if Mr. Beast Studios hasn't already locked that shit down. I think a proper way to do challenges like this is to play to the strength of the contestant. Jake's a comedian, so maybe instead of a marathon, make me laugh. Tell me a funny joke, like King Kai. Anyways, the final part of this video concerns a masked man named Delaware who has well, let's just say he's done the sex offender shuffle. This person was not only a brother-in-law of Jake the Viking, but had been featured in a Mr. Beast video wearing a mask and had worked at the company for some time, who he has an offense on his record against an 11 year old and he's working with the top YouTuber whose audience is predominantly kids in positions where they have an internal document highlighting no doesn't always mean no. I mean, Pretty serious red flags. Like you have to be doing something very wrong to let somebody from the sex offender shuffle onto the payroll. 
So yeah, really not looking good for Mr. Beast at all. I think that's a generous way of putting it. That's pretty much where the story ends as of right now. No known police investigation has been launched into Ava Chris Tyson. No charges have been made against Mr. Beast or anybody, no civil lawsuits. And I wager Mr. Beast is going to continue uploading as if nothing happened in an attempt to just power through this controversy. In conclusion, it's not looking good for Mr. Beast, man. Rome wasn't built in a day, but neither was it destroyed in a day. Jenga can be a long game, but if all the right pieces are pulled out, the tower will collapse. I really don't know how Mr. Beast is going to respond to all of these accusations or how this will affect his business and channel long term. He's currently working on Beast Games, a show funded by Amazon, and that's part of the story I haven't even covered about how people are being treated over there. Jimmy certainly has some explaining to do, though I'm not sure what explanation he would give that would make what I'm seeing okay or excusable. The Ava Chris Tyson stuff was inexcusable as is hiring someone on the registry. And here's the thing, you can't best the devil twice. You can convince me you're a great altruistic charitable person, but if it turns out you do some shady shit, it's extremely hard to use the same tactics to convince me that you are a great charitable altruistic person. I really didn't want to believe all the stuff that's coming out, but it's looking harder and harder to refute, and I wager this is not the end by any means. I think we're just getting started. But what do you think about all this stuff? Like, comment, and subscribe for a chance to win eight bajillion dollars. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Peace.